all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back-to-back -back update and information as it is hot in case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to all your notification button today uh, we'll be having an important discussion uh, to, uh yesterday and today uh, a lot of people has been celebrating the armed forces day uh, the day of the fallen heroes and the rest of them and um, myself uh, many people have started asking even some people have um, contacted me and saying you could push uh, why don't you put them out for this thing and that's the reason why i've decided that i'm going to put them out in it uh, because uh, they say a person where they talk for all nine all they look for as they be many people don't they complain say uh, does it mean that um, the warriors uh, will be say then die for the Biafra War of 1967 to 1970? Say, are they not going to be remembered or even recognized? Even though that um, the members of the indigenous people of Biafra, those who formed IPOB uh, in the recent time, in the past time, has choose, I think, May 29. Uh, for the remembrance of um, the fallen heroes and also to remember how Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria, uh, bringing the, the, the three protectorates uh, to make it one. But as it is, many people are asking what happened since um, the NIG uh, leader then, head of state, or head of uh, state, yes, go on, declared no victor, no vanquish. What is happening? Why are these heroes who fell, uh, about millions of them who fell, those who died out of the gun barrel and those who passed on during the, uh, because of hunger and other things that happened to them? The question is, why are these people not remembered? Now, let me take you to a write-up, uh, Biafra War Anniversary and Fight Against Igbo, Pardon Nandekano, or as the Chief Ten to Tinubu. Uh, this one awaiting on her as the chieftain that tell Tinubu. Of course, you know that the governor of Imo State uh, was sworn in yesterday, in the person of uh, uh, His Excellency Senator Hope Ozodema was sworn in for his second term. And the president of Nigeria was there alive. Even the former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, in whose uh, uh, order the constitution was, changed, uh, was you know, amended was also there present and i was waiting to see what is on his and Libo, what are they supposed to tell tinubu since he is live in our libo you know to let him to know what is actually happening also at this part of the site before i'll go back to uh let's go to the full details of the information a chieftain of the honest and Libo social cultural organization okechuku isiguzo has urged president bola tinubu to officially end the war against Igbos ahead of the 54th Biafra War Anniversary. He urged Tinubu to implement the reconstruction, reconciliation and rehabilitation and the opening up of the Eastern Corridors for economic development and the liberation of the old Eastern region. In a statement he signed, he said, the Igbo endured persecution and economic strangulation due to the historical neglect of old eastern region by past federal governments. He said, while other zones have benefited from the center, the southeast has been systematically excluded and deprived of its rightful share. According to Isiguzoro, major infrastructures destroyed during the three and six months of the Biafra war have not been adequately reconstructed by previous military and civilian governments over the past 54 years. Genuine reconciliation from the federal government towards Ndibo has been lacking, replaced by the deliberate exclusion of the Southeast from certain privileges and the denial of access to viable seaports in the old eastern region, such as the permanent closure of the Calabar seaport. He also reminded Tinubu that the federal government has failed to pay the repatriation fees demanded by Igbo leaders 
during the administration of ex-president Olusegun Obasanjo and late Musa Yaradua. Additionally, the repatriation fees demanded by Igbo leaders during the Obasanjo and Yaradua regime have not been paid, and in the implementation of the 2024 Constitutional Conference and the Reconstruction Proposal put forth by the APC Committee, led by former Governor Erofai, have been disregarded, he said. Isiguzoro also informed the President that he was yet to grant pardon to the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdekano, and other agitators. He added, furthermore, the granting of pardon to IPOB leader Namdekano and Biafra agitators who are genuinely fighting against previous governments untold persecution is yet to be realized. Another aspect that demands urgent attention is the rehabilitation of the old eastern region through increased federal presence. The lack of federal infrastructural de development in the southeast is dis deeply concerning. Ahanez and Debo implore President Tinubu to utilize his esteemed office to initiate the end of the war by prioritizing reconciliation, reconstruction, and rehabilitation in the southeast. Ahanez and Debo remains hopeful that President Tinubu, as a leader known for his commitment to justice and fairness, we champion the cause to end the war and bring about lasting peace, reconciliation, and development in the southeast. This one is coming from the chieftain of the Ohanes Ndibo as they advocate uh, um, uh, that Maze uh, Nandi cannot be released, and also that the president of Nigeria uh, look into uh, many, many things that uh, should be done. As it is, uh, other persons are saying that. Uh, it is uh, 54 years after the Civil War uh, and show me Barrett's unfair treatment of Igbo's call for Nam the Kano's release. As it be a former gubernatorial aspirant in Ogun State on the platform of People Democratic Party, uh, Otumba Segun Shoumi has insinuated that the continuous detention of the indigenous people of Biafra leader Nam the Kano was a tes testament to the unfair treatment of Southeast people in the country. This is as he also, on behalf of Nigeria, appealed to the Igbos to forgive the nation for the ugly experience they went through during the Civil War and what he described as crime against humanity that might have taken place, including loss of lives and assets. In a statement he sent out to newsmen on Monday, including Veracity Dex, Show me demanded unconditional release of Kano, stressing that such will restore peace and normalcy to the southeast region with a multiply, multiplier positive effect on the entire country. The Abokuta bomb politician added that in, go, in good conscience, Sunday Igoho cannot be free and Kano will be in captivity. Civil War 54 years after Alandibo. Or them <laughs> um, this one now Yoruba person now in the talk this one or in say <laughs> uh, the thing where we say they don't they do Ndibo for this Nigeria say it don't plenty but he gets one thing why I want to talk uh, because he gets some things why they I don't they observe about Ndibo uh, their politics and the rest of them it can be say some of these people uh, Ndibo they cry uh, say they are marginalized, this, that, that, and that. And my question is, has there been a time Ndibo came together and they still felt marginalized? No, because um, Ndibo will come together to achieve a particular thing. I'm not talking about the issue of um, uh, the, the dividing Nigeria, let everybody go. I'm just talking about how Ndibo themselves has been able to do themselves. Because one then and one the two brothers <clears throat> will be going for hunting, and the other person will be saying that his brother's leg is like rabbit ra leg and shot the leg. <laughs> now, so it happened for Ibo Landers now. One then, 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 the then, one then, one then, has not actually come together to face, you know, what is bedeviling them. Because, why? Because 
Um, uh, should I say that the issue of Sabotua, which started immediately after the independence, and the issue of Sabotua, which also existed during the colonial master, when the colonial master would choose some people who he believed that agreed with him, and you see the other people, those people oppressing their, their brothers, those who are known, known as Kotman then, uh, now nah, some people they call them Kotman, but it's not Kotman, it is Kotman. I don't know if you're getting it now. These men were used against their own brothers with the white man. And you see that the same thing continues. Meanwhile, let me wind down the curtain here. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share. And also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first. Well, collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you.